Hmm? Uh, what? Hey, we should be good. Spider Gwen. Spider Gwen. Okay. Bump. <laughs> Wait for somebody to break. What the fuck? I had no idea what was going on. I win. Hello, and welcome to Strange Conversations. Each and every week we gather together to discuss uh, some important topics that mean very much to us, as well as uh, news of the week. Uh, Dylan, since it is a new week, I'm going to head it off to you for the news. Well, I'm Dylan Sinat. Oh, that's a good point. I probably shouldn't do that. I've had very little sleep, but I'm in a weird headspace, so let me tell you what. Uh, to my right is... John Pettit. Handsome John. Boop. To my left. Mark Plover. To my other left. Dylan Sinat. That was really fun because you weren't looking. And I so know. I just looked at Mark and I was like, I can jump on this bandwagon. You're going to be last again. <laughs> He's always last. Who are you? Oh, uh, well, my name is Brett Metcalf. <laughs> and now. Can we start the <laughs> fuck over? <laughs> Jesus no, Christ. No, we must go on. The show must go on. And Dylan, what's happening this week? So there's a lot of stuff out there that happens every week. But this, this is the important sh- uh, the first thing that we kind of want to talk about is that E3 released, or I guess everyone's releasing their Who Won E3, uh, and a surprising game wins action game. That is Anthem seemingly wins action game and best PC. I feel mm. like you're trying to like rub it in my face that it's surprising. I don't think it's that surprising. Because what other action game would you put in there? Is Spidey not considered an action game? Action Adventure. That's why it won Action Adventure. Yeah, I feel like those are so close. I don't disagree. Yeah, I mean, uh, one wrong. literally contains the name of the other. Correct. Exactly. Uh, I mean, I don't know what else is even in the category. Genres are weird. Um, I, Sekio, the, was yeah. Shadows Die Twice could be in there. Is you, Fallout 76 not in there? I'd put Ghost of Tsushima in there. It's an action game. Uh, Fallout How would that win? It's a shooter. That's Maybe. Yeah. yeah. It's first person shooter. Rage 2. That's a first person That's a first person <laughs> yeah. knife throwing competition. <laughs> <laughs> or Blade. Yeah, but Anthem I'm would be a first person shooter too. Didn't, wasn't. Um, Third person shooter. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, shooters can't. A first person shooter can be an action game because they're two separate genres, but one doesn't exclude the other. It, it's it, This is, by the way, this is not the first time this conundrum has come up to pass. Oh. Yeah. This is something <laughs> that people go, shooter is definitely, that's shooter. That's an action game. Yeah. We'll call that one fighting. Yeah. And then the action adventure one is third person and this, they go do this stuff. This one's got adventure, <laughs> but they're also fighting. It's just it's too adventure. adventure. See, that's what I feel like. Uncharted is just like, they're like, you go on an adventure, action adventure. <laughs> <laughs> However, Anthem, you make your own venture. So well, it's like the Zelda's game's less not an action adventure, adventure <laughs> than Uncharted, but it's not any less adventurous. Yeah. Or, I mean, it's Would Zelda not be able to be an action game instead of an action adventure game? Ooh. Maybe. People coming off high with Anthem this week on track. Um, I'm not surprised considering the fact that most people were not thinking it was going to be great. Yep. At least not a great showing at E3. I shouldn't say the game wouldn't be great, but. It's very easy to impress people when everyone thought it was going to fail. Correct. That's true. Yeah. Uh, the next thing that we had in the gaming world from me is uh, Sea of Thieves. The devs are talking about how fascinated they are with BRs and how they would want to do their own twist. Please put in BR mode right as BR dies, and that way Sea of Thieves can really be sunk. Yeah, 100%. Hmm. It's already dead. Yeah. Yeah, I like the pun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. Now, the only way I can see this happening is, you know, giant boats just falling from the sky. I wonder if they would locate, put the location of this, uh, the map could just be called the Dead Sea, just to keep it rolling. <laughs> It'd be cool <laughs> if they actually made flying ships. What? <laughs> Hard Sorry, left. my brain went somewhere. Hard left, different game. <laughs> something involved, awesome. something no, involving like Vikings. Where he's at. They're flying ships, and you just like the come same out ones from Monster Hunter. Shoot down from the flying <laughs> ship. <laughs> well, it's a BR, right? Everybody else Next flies story, in. Story, please. I don't even. I don't. I got nothing for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I want to help you. I do. I really do. It was just my brain doing random things. I can't help it sometimes. That's terrifying. Uh, yeah. The last bit of news that I had is that Apple Music has passed Spotify with an asterisk. It has passed Spotify for paid users in America, <laughs> um, which is really impressive considering that you have to have an iPhone. So 50% of the people at this table cannot have Apple Music. Correct. No, no, actually, that was my question. Apple has a few apps I know yeah. uh, that were that are in the Play Store about migrating from Android to Apple, but I didn't know if they had like Apple Music. Right. So, yeah, it's, you can only tap half the mobile market in the U.S., and they have passed Spotify for premium. However, Spotify does have a free service, which Apple doesn't offer, so that does kind of make it a little bit more competitive. I agree. Yeah. Also, uh, they're gra- gaining 5% users a month, where Spotify is only doing about 25 hmm. Spotify has around 80 million worldwide. Apple Music has like 45. I can tell you why Spotify is 
is only 2.5 because if you try the free version it sucks donkey dick <laughs> like it is <laughs> God God didn't you already awful. spout off about how bad it 100%, was 100 <laughs> and anytime someone talks about it i will go on a 10 minute rant i'll hold off here but yeah, thank you. i cannot handle the crappiness that is their free version of Spotify. So, so did you pay? No, and that's the yeah. thing is I refuse to pay because I got a terrible service to begin with. Why would I pay for it? That's true. Yeah. All right. Up next, sipping on your little uh, Kermit the Frog Kool Aid. I was wanting you to do it with me, but you Kermit me. the Frog here. Um. So <laughs> the. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Man, he looked over at me. He's like, "Is he staring at me?" Oh God. <laughs> So we can guess if Brent does the try not to chat laugh video in anyone else's room, they're getting spewed on. <laughs> That's what yeah, we're I'm not today. doing it with him. Um, so uh, there seemingly uh, is 21 games on the Twitch yeah. free yeah, yeah, games yeah. for July. It, what, what it is is a, it's uh, Amazon's Twitch Prime. They started offering this service earlier this year, um, which is interesting. Uh, I watch Twitch, but I don't keep up enough, and I also don't play a whole lot on PC. So I really need to get on this because it's building up a nice sizable library uh some of the games include pillars of eternity definitive edition metal slug 3 um i saw in here they also have um goner observer tacoma brutal legend like it's a mm -hmm. sizable amount of games that yep. all seem pretty cool and this is on top of giving you a free subscription for a month where you can subscribe to someone for free like there's a lot of different things that are just tied into amazon prime in general and so if you have twitch i highly recommend keeping that on there the one caveat is that makes it a little frustrating is that you have to use the Twitch client to play those games. Yeah, that is dumb. Huh? Yeah. They have Unless it's an exclusive DLC, you can do that. Crap. Hmm. So. I've, I've literally never played any of this. Well, <laughs> you haven't had Twitch for uh, 21. It does seem like they're definitely ramping up for Prime Day. Prime 100%. Day is July 16th. 16th, 17th, yeah. Yep. I'm hoping to get some exercise equipment. That's random. Here for you. Is it going to be a flying ship version? It could be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he's a Viking helmet. Yeah. Um, and then... Another on the Amazon topic, they're no longer offering it discounts for remasters and re-releases. Yeah, this is a weird one because uh, it's distinctly they they have it uh, it's set up right now uh, where you can pre-order a game on Amazon and you get a twenty percent discount if you are a Prime member. Yep. So this Prime discount used to go for two weeks after the game's release. They axed that. Physical only. Physical only, of course. Yeah. Uh, and mm. now they're axing remasters and re-releases. So like the new uh, re uh, release of Crash Bandicoot on Switch and Xbox One doesn't get counted. Um, oh, I would man. argue that probably Shadow of Colossus, which came out on PS4 earlier this year, would not have been counted. Yeah. Uh, Spyro's coming out in September, and it's not counted. I wow. do wonder as well. One, I think that they're losing money because a lot of people are doing this. Yeah. Uh, two, I also wonder, there's going to be so many weird scenarios, like, uh, for example, like Kingdom Hearts, because half of it is a remaster. So, no, there's a specific bundle that you can okay. get, and that's all digital. Oh, okay, okay. Um, but there are Kingdom Hearts remasters that are on there that would have been under this. Um, Toad Treasure Tracker comes out. Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker comes out for Switch this Friday, and it's not counted. Like, My question is, why are they even bothering doing this if they don't want to do it? Just stop doing it. I don't disagree. It seems like they're it's reluctantly... Stupid petty. Yeah, they're reluctantly pulling away every aspect of it until it's gone. If it's going to be a re-release re or a remaster, it's either considered as a new game or it's not. Well, especially when you look at most of these re-releases and remasters that are going physical are charging at least $30. What's twenty percent of thirty dollars? It's six bucks they're losing. Like, yeah, it, it just makes me not want to. Yeah, but you got to think about the uncharted, whatever remastered edition, which was sixty, 60 bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And Best Buy is doing it still, so I mean, yeah, with their Game Pass, you do have to pay for. I mean, you're paying for obviously for Amazon Prime, yeah. but um, the Best Buy one is a little more expensive overall. I think it's like a hundred bucks for a year, or sixty yeah, bucks for a year. I don't know. Well, they hmm. they you can't even join it anymore because it's canceled. Yeah. So. Oh really? Yeah. yeah they know. killed the trading program that I used to, you know. Shadily, you know, <laughs> it's a good um, program. But it'll be interesting to see what Amazon does over the course of the next year. I imagine that we will probably see this benefit disappear entirely. Yeah, I think they're gonna wait until they kill GameStop and then and then do it. Then <laughs> then is it because there's just sense? not enough peripherals to sell with them, and that's what they were banking on? I I don't know. Yeah. It's also really impressive to me because like you guys got um, got a word night of yeah right yeah, and even though you could have saved twenty percent, it was more convenient to get a night of. Well, Ama Amazon's a weird one because I will, like, I have Octopath Traveler coming this Friday. It's a, a freak theme. I'm really excited about it. It'll appear on my doorstep sometime between noon and 8. And <laughs> the biggest problem is is that most of the time, right around 4 o'clock, which is fine. 
but there have been times where it has been Eight nine o'clock. or ten o'clock at night where someone finally shows up in my game. Yeah, and that irritates me. And you're like, I got to go to bed, dog. I got to work tomorrow. It's a Tuesday. <laughs> you know what they call that? <laughs> First world problems. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so on the notion of random weird things like getting your mail at nine or ten o'clock at night, why in the world is Idris Elba a <laughs> villain? For a Fast and the Furious spinoff. Or one of the most successful, most emotionally driven movie franchises of all times. Yes. Uh, he is going to be the villain in the, what is it? Hobbs and, I don't remember yeah, that. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be The Rock. Jason Statham. Yeah, The Rock and Jason Statham, their spinoff. Hobbs and Shaw. That's there you is. go. Uh, it's going to be their spinoff. And I just Elba is going to be the villain. I cannot wait. I'm so excited. I wait. First of all, <laughs> the movie franchise is so dumb. I was going to say, it's already out. there. Like, you don't have to worry about it. It is one of the few dumb movies where I'm like, I'll go to a midnight show for this because <laughs> I want to see them jump cars across buildings. <laughs> and I love Idris Elba. So. Yeah. Hmm. He's yeah. going to be the highlight of the movie for me. Oh, me absolutely. 100%. I love Jason Statham. Don't get me wrong. And The Rock. I like The Rock more in a comedy way. I agree. I just I think he does it really well. I think his character is fine in Fast and the Furious. He, he's funny enough. It's just a tool. Oh, my God. It's so great. You know I like dessert first. <laughs> give, give me my, my veggies. veggies. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's that bad. I just had to look up who Idris Elba, uh, Elba was. All right, that's cool. He did yeah. Dark Tower. Did a really good job he's with that. He's a gatekeeper in yeah. um, uh, Heimdall. Thor. Thor, yeah, the it's Thor Heimdall. movies. Oh. Heimdall. That's yeah. Heimdall. He's that's a also Heimdall. star of the hit BBC show, Luther, which is excellent. Everybody should be watching it. It's on Netflix. Is it bigger than the the Doctor Doctor Who? Didn't the end? Should it? be. Uh, I don't know. I think they were shooting season five recently. Hmm. Thought that it was the last. Season. He's also on the Wire, and I'm in the middle of watching the Wire. Totally just tangential. Doesn't matter. Um, really good show Segways if you like detective noir stories. It's on HBO. I know I'm like way late to the game because the Wire came out. Yeah, I like thought that was a Super Bowl show. And, and that like the Wire Netflix. and the Sopranos were like really big old yeah, shows. That's really good hmm. though. Okay. He's in it, so that's weird. Connective tissue. Uh, moving on <laughs> to other random topics. Uh, for some odd reason, if you were paranoid of dropping your cell phone, uh, a dumb company has decided to make airbags. Raise that cell phone above the, uh, the computer there. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> Boom! You would have had an airbag. Exactly. Exactly. I really hope his screen's cracked when he picks this up. Nope. Now we're good. <sighs> I planned it. He did. Helpful. Anyway, um, there is a uh, a German student. Uh, be honest, I don't remember his name now. Philip, uh, Philip something. Franco. Seymour Hoffman. No, I just no. <laughs> <it's not Franco. laughs> no, I wanted to. I wanted to say uh, Franco because it starts with an F. But anyway, um, in Germany, he d- had, like I guess as a research project decided he was going to come up with a product, a phone case that you could have that was going to protect your phone in the event of a fall. And literally, the way that it works is, I mean, it's a very thin case as far as that goes. That's all. It's like on the back end of your phone, and it has these four little arms that come out and that spring out. And I'm not kidding you, like. Yeah, literally like this, like around the corners of your phone to basically give it this little protective bubble thing. Yeah, so if you had your phone, it would come out here, 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 and here on both sides. And so it's it's like a spring loader. Like if you remember old uh, hangers have like that metal clasp in there. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's designed like that. So it shoots out. And it would just bounce. Have you land. seen those yep. devil creations from Boston Dynamics who are going to take over the world one day? It looks like one of those. Okay, you need to look. Okay, everyone in the world. No. <laughs> just, if, just like, before the about the butterflies over his head. You know. Yeah, if you haven't ever looked up Boston Dynamics robots, one, this is exactly how we die. Correct. <laughs> because these robots are freaking crazy smart. Yeah. They make Me. them look like weird dogs, and they can like open doors and like chase things and stuff. And in this dumb video, I've this seen man make robots and stuff. But you is, mentioned this with a cell phone bubble. I'm like, he's <laughs> pulling like the stupid thing's tail and like oh, holding yeah, it back. Right, I'm like, right. if I was a robot 20 years from now, I look back, I'm gonna kill that human. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly how we go extinct. So it's not a bag or, or a bubble or anything. It's mm-hmm. just those plastic tendrils come it, out. Yeah. To it's it's not even yeah, it's not even really an airbag system. It's more like a, a spring mechanism that comes out of the yeah. phone in all directions so it doesn't matter what angle the phone hits the ground it will just flop around like a flounder on the ground and then until it finally comes to rest it looks really cool yeah it does sound very nice. I'm, I'm i'm very excited just to see something like that it's come out made of simple 3d parts and uh, 3d printed parts and mm-hmm. an arduino so so what's the cost where can you buy it uh no production yet um he does have a patent for it though so mass production actually could be viable as long as he gets somebody to, to uh, invest in it. yeah exactly well and an arduino is Arguably, you could buy one cheap. Yeah, you can get them super cheap. 
thirty to sixty bucks at most, and then as, you're talking about three yeah. D printing, so you're talking less than a hundred bucks. Well, yeah. even then, if he gets somebody a proper investor, he'll have his own circuit boards using the chips from the Arduino. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I Correct. think it'd be worth it specifically for the thousand fifteen hundred dollar phones. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, they're gonna be two grand soon. So yeah, I know yeah. they're coming. I think the name you're looking for, Mark, was Philip Seymour Hoffman. It's definitely not that one either. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Philip Fry. Um, the how do I don't even. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to pick up from that. I tried to hold on to it, but I couldn't. Um, the next bit of news that we had is Samsung is now opening the largest ever cell phone factory in India. Philip Frenzel for the last one, by the way. Frenzel? Frenzel. We'll have the video link below. Watch that and the Dive Boston Dynamics video. I showed John, but doesn't matter. Oh, oh, the picture? Okay. It's not that big a deal. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, y- you missed a perfect segue, by the way, there. From cell phones to cell phone factory. But yeah, yeah. Anyway. Well, I'm sorry I got derailed because... <laughs> We got Philip C. Hoffman, <laughs> Philip J. Fry, Philip C. And Hoffman, Philip DeFranco. That, that 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 one just added to the list. Anyway, so Samsung just opened up a uh, another thirty-five acre factory in India. Thirty-five acres. Got to be at least a million square feet. Bringing their total output of number of units per year from India alone from ninety-six million to one hundred and twenty million units every year. Real quick, world trivia: Why would they want to do that? Any takers. Everything created outside of India and brought inside to India is subjective to a 100% tax. Yeah, you mentioned uh, that. Right, 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 right. So do you want this phone to cost a grand or two grand? But they can outport it all day or export if it all I day. If I lived in India, yes. Yeah, you. They, what do they think they make? They don't make our salary. <laughs> yeah, not only that, how many customers do you think they yeah. have? That con- that's, that's and if that, that $1,000 phone can only appeal to a small portion of the population, the $2,000 is even less. Yeah. yeah. Very much no, so. But uh, this is kind of a big deal for them because, uh, I mean, there's, you've heard a lot, uh, I guess, about, like, Japanese factories, things like that. Some even Chinese factories, some of them are closing down, not doing too well. Like Everybody Apple's, committing Apple's suicide kinda, for Apple, being overworked. Apple kind of has shots. a bad reputation because the factories that build their products are, you know, kind of awful. But Samsung's just opening up more and more and more and increasing their units and are better yet making them public about how nice and big they are. So You actually yeah. forget the name of the company that actually creates most of their cell phones. I don't remember exactly what their name is. Um, but they're actually opening up facilities here in the U.S. as well because they're terrified of Trump's tariffs. Yeah. So I think it's outside of Chicago um, and someplace in Indiana. Mm. They're putting the two largest cell phone factories in the U.S. out there. Wow. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. And it's the same company that does all the Apple and Samsung stuff. Interesting. Fun fact of the 35-acre – I'm done. I'm just going to be something dumb. Don't worry about it. Oh, no, Jesus. please. No, you're, you've already gotten the point. Is Philip C. Hoffman going to be there? 30 <laughs> acres are uh, set aside for just rice farming. <laughs> I just, we don't Why? claim him. I want to be a hashtag fake. <laughs> hashtag fake news. Oh hashtag fake news. <laughs> I don't. One thirty acres is so much. I don't even think rice is manufactured in India. Isn't that another part Probably of Asia? Probably a type of rice. I would There's imagine. jasmine rice there. Yeah. Well, whatever. It's I mean, they, curry everywhere. Curry I'm everywhere. Man. Positive. It's not grown inside a facility, but sure, it could be. I'm pretty could sure. Be, it yeah. Is. yeah. Hydroponics. Yeah. Whatever. Science. Outdoor. Science. You're just the science segment. This is where we're going. <laughs> My hope is to make everyone dumber. Can we move on, please? <laughs> we are all now dumber. He accomplishes his goal every episode. Uh, the next bit of news that we had is Google Home reported uh, some some rather terrifying outages. Global outage. Actually. No, cool. Every single Google Home a device, Google Mini or the Home Minis and the regular homes were out um, for a brief window of about five minutes. Um, but the problem is, is that other devices took longer to try to reconnect because after a certain number of retries, they just kind of stop or, or I guess maybe increase the interval in which they check. Uh, they said that like some people reported outages greater than half an hour. I want to keep in mind, Google Assistant worked just fine on your phones. Yeah. However, Google Homes, like everywhere, were just kind of out of service. Like if you tried to say anything to it anyway, it would say, sorry, it's not available at this time. You know, try again in a couple seconds. Someone hit the wrong button. This yeah. house must have been in turmoil. It's Stop. Kevin Durant and his stupid yo feature. <laughs> it finally failed. I don't um, know if you guys saw that stupid commercial seven hundred times. Google. No, it's a Google Home commercial where like like oh yeah Google can do this and it's like oh turn on the lights, lock the door, show me the front door, order this, do this, and then the whole time Kevin Durant's like yo Google and they're like no, no great, uh, can we get another take where you say hey Google and then it, like he goes does a whole bunch of the stuff and comes back and he's just like. Yo, Google. And they're like, oh, that's fine. We'll just get the engineers to, you know, change the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty funny, actually. Um, but a little terrifying because, you know, a big company like Google who prides themselves on their uptime. Yeah. Well, not only that, they're 
customer service is not great because it's almost non-existent for devices, they, they products. Almost, yeah. They don't need them. Like, uh, well, actually, their customer service is actually pretty good, depending on what service you're using. Yeah. But yeah, uh, it's it's a little terrifying for that. Well, I guess it's just kind of. Do they know what the cause of it was? They never, they haven't announced it. Okay. Yo, Google. They just said that it. <laughs> they just said it wasn't. Uh, um, they said they were working on it, and they came back up within like five yeah, minutes. We'll so. probably never will know. There's no reason for them to tell the public why. Blame it on Kevin Durant on their end, like Kevin Durant. We'll drop it. Well, my, I think it is important if someone tried to hack them and was gaining information. But to be that Kevin Durant, fair, definitely make me a little paranoid. But fair, they would never tell you that. No, because people try to hack them all the time. And that's why we got mad at Sony. And that's why we'll get mad at Google. No, 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 no. Oh, come no, out. no, no. We got mad at Sony because someone successfully hacked them and they didn't tell anyone. That's fair. That's the problem. You know why we but should what, really? We do. don't know if they didn't get successful. Do you right, want to know why we should point. really be mad at Sony? Because they're allowing Dark Siders three to be released. Because nobody cares. That's that is not, not true. Because no I care, and it's being released wrong. on November twenty seventh, twenty eighteen. Like and the I two plan of you in your tangents. <laughs> Seriously, like <laughs> that's not a tangent. That is my story, sir. You're that's right. That's a tangent. Like it's off that. to the, 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 yeah. the perfect. Thing. Yeah. See, segues are fun. Somebody yeah. said. Yeah. If somebody said segues are fun. Yeah. I'm not <laughs> yes. So I was uh, watching the trailer drop today around noon ish. Yeah, and uh, I was a little lackluster in some of it, but at the same time, it's early on. Did we say when it was launching? Yeah, November twenty seventh, twenty eighteen. We were just all talking. Do yeah, we? Was... Do we not? Anyone else not think that that's very terrifying? Not at all. I think okay. because looking at it, it's more Devil May Cry based. Unfortunately, the Devil May Cry that he doesn't like, um, where it's got a lot of the long range kind of like no, Devil Bringer stuff. I don't mind that. No? I like I. Once again, I just make fun. Four is <laughs> fine. I can get. It's just a repetitive, boring game compared to the others. And oh that yeah, is what it's I was... fine. I just hate it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate it. I it, just it's a it. fine game. I just didn't like it, <laughs> yeah. and that's okay. But um, that that is one thing that is worrying me. Looking at what I was doing here, or looking at what they put on the trailer, I'm like, this looks pretty. Like it's going to be very repetitive. Like, but then you saw different, different. Forms. Uh, forms. Yeah. You saw different weapons, and uh, there's a puzzle aspect like there was with uh, the first Dark Sider. So I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. Um, I'll probably end up still buying it and playing it because it is my type of game to play. Yeah. No hack and slash. Even if it is mindless, I can still do that. It, it's so. gonna be interesting to see what happens because THQ is the property holder of this. THQ goes under. THQ Nordic forms itself yeah. from X devs that were involved at THQ and as well as Nordic. Which how is, do you get to keep that name? Because they literally it's made up it for sale. Like okay. li- literally, the THQ sold everything they had. I wonder how much that name went for. I hope it was like hundred bucks. I'm no. sure it wasn't a whole lot. I don't know why <laughs> you would wasn't keep THQ it. It was Nordic. A totally did. They just kept it was their THQ name. THQ was a publisher. And Nordic, Nordic, Nordic was bought a them and they made it THQ Nordic. Yeah. Yeah. It's hmm. so dumb. Just get rid of THQ. Doesn't nah, matter. Nah, nah. I digress. Best hundred bucks. Um, ever. I think. <laughs> I think what's interesting is that they have had a terrible time advertising this game. IGN had a, they have a special thing that uh, they do called IGN First where they pick a game and throughout the month they get like the first scoop on that game, whatever it is. Yep. And they did that with this game. But what they showed was like the smallest 10 minute gameplay glimpse of a level. Whereas you've played, these games are like Zelda esque where there's yeah. large puzzles and chasms, mechanics. Like you got to show a little bit more. And all they've done is show that little 10 play, like minute clip and then they show the ch- launch trailer today which was a bunch of cut scenes where it's like she's getting attacked by a thing cut to she's attacking another thing cut to and i was like okay i want to see what this game looks like this is not anything we know what this game looks like right now well that just shows that what's important to them and yeah. that is yep. literally the fighting gameplay they didn't har- show har- to me charlotte show too much outside of the fighting so that to me is okay. I mean, Dark Siders is very much that way. There was puzzle aspects, but it wasn't like huge part of it. Yeah. So uh, I'll be interested to see how it goes. I'm definitely gonna yeah. get into it. Though yeah. I am a little Dark Siders one. It's more like than I think Dark Siders two is. But both Dark Siders one and two had pretty good graphics. This one I'm not so so keen yeah. on on this. Uh, at least to compare it on the same level. But we'll see what happens. In it's the almost game. like it should just be released on a PS5 with higher graphic fidelity. I think graphic. I don't think that would help because I think literally the actual. And, I like, totally the think budget is the issue that here. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think it's the graphics so much as it is the art direction. This this and one it would feels, take too long because it'd be coming out in 2020. This one feels blander <laughs> than the other ones, where I feel like there's more <laughs> detail in everything. This one feels very much like 
generic is the only term I can kind of come to. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's like you said, there's nothing revolutionary about it. It's yeah. not a bad thing, yeah. but at the same time, you were hoping for a little bit more. Well, yeah. I, I, I personally was because you love Darksiders. Oh, dude, I love I, one. I like I what killed they, that game. I like what they do with the franchise. They released it on Switch. Who? Oh, man. Dog it. Yeah. <laughs> See, my issue here is it just, to me, really looked like, not to knock the studio at all, but it just looked almost like a knockoff of the game. Like yeah, Dark. I agree. It was almost like, like a knockoff of yeah, Darksiders. It didn't look like, I was like, is this the right trailer? <laughs> but you know what? Oh, wow, There's a lot is. of people that say I'd rather have better game than yeah. better graphics, and this yeah. might be the end of it. I mean, look at Fortnite. People like it more than PUBG. This is the last time. No this is the last chance for Darksiders to actually continue Do something. Going. Like this, yeah, this, this, this is has got to succeed, or they're done. So, yep. or they're hmm. dead. Yeah. Or they're gonna, dead. or they're gonna like literally rebrand into a puzzle game of some kind or something That'd be ridiculous. Just move it to a comic book line. Or That'd be amazing. Yeah. That'd be cool. I think it would do All great right, as cool. a puzzle. It'd be like. Ghost Rider esque, yeah. you know? That's weird. Um, the next bit of news uh, that we had is that Assassin's Creed is hoping with technology leaps and bounds, it can allow you to have multiple worlds. Yeah. Like leaps and bounds in tech, like, you know, a PlayStation 5. Yeah. Which coming they out could. next year. I mean, they'd have more. Next year's Assassin's Creed launch title. You heard it first. <laughs> <laughs> You're so dumb. It's not Hashtag fake news. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy eating that pizza. The. Uh, most delicious pizza pie ever. It better it be at be least half yeah. pepperoni is all I'm saying. The, uh, so I get to choose. I win. What? Continue. I didn't hear what he said. Literally. Doesn't matter. Go. No. Go. I want to know what he said. He gets to choose. He wins. No, he don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Assassin's Creed is uh, – or not Assassin's Creed. Ubisoft is talking about wanting to expand their games from you know being very closed-minded and like, oh, we're in Rome time or we're in Egypt or huh? – Different news story. Which that's one not, are you talking it. about? Oh, that's the, it. the technology no. involving Assassin's Creed. No, that, that you're talking about the finite. Okay, yeah. Issue. It sounded like you were heading that direction. It's okay. We can just I, I'm, I'm an adult. I can think for myself. Thanks, bud. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> you're not wrong. That Shots was hard. a Brent laugh, by the way. Would you like that? The um the fade. Yeah. The interesting part about this is that they want to go between two different time eras or more. And that's going to kind of build it vertically as opposed to out like they have been. They've been getting progressively larger, a lot more stuff to do in the same area, which also makes it for a much more repetitive uh, gameplay experience, which is what my biggest complaint was with Assassin's Creed. Yeah. But if you could change up the scenery and a little bit of the gameplay aspects and build it vertically, I think that you could have a much more solid experience and have something to where new DLC is just a new area and it's built upon the same game. They're not going to do that. I think it would be cool. I totally agree. They're not going to do that. They're not going to do that. I, I agree with that. I think there's two things here. One, Assassin's Creed's always been repetitive. We're just older now, and we notice it. No, it's fine. And so yeah. is Far Cry, but I'm still going to platinum that game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> two, I think the idea of doing two different time frames, especially if the story can interconnect them in some form or another, like around one of those relics. Yeah, they're going to have to get the shit together when it comes to storyline because they've been screwing it up pretty bad. Yeah, you might want to hit the good old space bar there. Origins is fine. So yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that it would be really intriguing to go not only just different time period, but different locale, like it, like in the world entirely, like starting off in uh, ancient Ireland and then moving over to Japan, like and having a very distinct time. You guys are oh, okay. way too ambitious. This is totally going to be. I, I was thinking I more disagree. along the lines of going from like almost like Rogue to Unity. No, so yeah. this is 100% going to be we're going to play in the real world. And the 1500s. That's fine with me. Yeah. They did I think it's really going to be like, oh, I'm getting attacked. They did it'll, it'll, it'll be the, they did that first for game and the first the second three. three. Yeah. That's what I think is weird about how they're like, yeah, oh, the whole entire SEO different collection. Because I think worlds they're, they're, or what was the exact word, different time periods. Yeah. I think they're distinctly yeah. talking about the different time periods that you yeah. go into when you're in the Animus. And Which granted, would be really easy. I mean, if you're like, I'm looking for something very specific, like instead of basically tracking the person, they're going to be tracking an object. Yeah, that's the whole goal. They're yeah. looking for either like an apple of Eden or something like that. So they're having to do that, and either like you're stuck into a prison cell and you're going into different people and going to different time yeah. periods, something like that. Well, and, and I think your great great control. granddaddy stole it. I'm gonna go <laughs> find him. <laughs> I think that they having the different time periods is also going to help because you're right. You can just be tracing this one object across time, but you can have the personal drama surrounding each character in those time periods work better because the biggest problem with the games as they stretch out to be longer is the fact that that personal drama between characters can sometimes feel a little bit 
soap opera ish. Well, the drama could also like again if you know you're in a prison cell and you're all a and, part of this and, whole yeah. entire economy going on in there. That could be where a lot of the story progression really yeah. goes right. through. And on top of that, you need to be able to jump off of a 25 story building into a bale of hay in the 1400s and he, the 800s. He just no, won't drop. He just won't drop this. No, it's dumb. It bothered me so much today. Your <laughs> E3 demo. Look at the game's realism. It's really, it's really realistic. It's very never, realistic. Did Why you don't you watch try the Revelation it? trailer work. when they're he, they're like doing that? Who's that guy that did that song? For I can't Revelations. remember. His name, oh my god, so it was good. so beautiful. And then you just see him flop. The drop. song is called Iron and Blood. Look yes, it up. look it up. It is worth the listen. I'll rewatch this afterwards. <laughs> yeah. All right. You can just roll on on to your more yeah. Assassin's Creed. Yeah, more Assassin's Creed shenanigans. It's more along the lines of Ubisoft in general. It's uh, Ubisoft. Huh? Ubisoft would be a way better name. You're a child. <laughs> <laughs> trying not to laugh, okay, and trying not to support his childish tones. But no, I enjoy Boobysoft. So Boobysoft <laughs> is really trying to Don't gain a concept of what I just talked about, and that's why I wanted to relate it to it, is them trying to gain a vertical footing within a game as opposed to a horizontal line. A vertical footing? Like well, I'm thinking of like vertical integration, a horizontal integration kind of way because, they're again, they've been spreading out and trying to create Stop. this one story in a large area. Now they're trying to create a longer distance, but in shorter spurts. To a it seems like. So they're trying to create an experience that builds upon itself, like deal, constant DLC is what it sounds like to me. And they're not wanting to say, okay, you've completed it. You've killed this one character. That's the end of it. You're done. And yeah, we as completionists will probably go and do some trophy sweep up, I guess is what you would call it. So I'm curious is a lot of people is, just drop it and go, and they want to keep yeah. people in the game. I'm like curious. They did yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm curious is to see. I'm confident the success of Siege is they're totally like dollar dollar bills, and how do we do this in a game and not release one every year? Because that costs a lot in development. So I'm just curious to see how they're going to implement it because we've never seen a minus life is strange series and uh, oh my god, Telltale Games uh, minus those a continued series that continually brings people back. On like the same core game. Well, I would at that level, I guess. I would wait. I would argue that. And wow, but wow, I don't count. I would say wow. I think is a better example than Life is Strange and Telltale because those are technically separate games. Yeah. In like more. But you're franchise. getting the MMO money. Not really. You're getting the monthly money. No, 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 no. You're no, I'm talking about for WoW. Yeah, that's why for, I think it's WoW. different. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm saying. Telltale and and I don't think they work here. I. Th it honestly sounds like they're going to do more of what they do with Origins, which is. Hey, we're gonna do weekly updates yep. where there's like a specific event going on. It'll cycle through five events, and it'll be that same event rotation. We may change it up here. We're gonna add a secret boss at some point in time, and then of course some paid and free DLC for the next year and a half until the next game comes out. I don't necessarily think this is going to be the big standing. Like we're gonna create Assassin's Creed the platform yet. Now, as time goes on, and they find ways in which they can successfully integrate these time periods i could easily see where they are like okay well we will make it like wow where you don't necessarily need to pay a monthly fee but we're going to have advertising in game you can pay for a premium subscription like you do for tamriel uh what is that um the the oh God. i want to know what you're talking elder about. scrolls game the elder scrolls online yes, uh, yeah yes so thank you Elder Scrolls Online, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because you can play that game completely for free. You yep. don't have to pay for anything. But if you become a premium member, every month they give you premium credit, which you can use to buy stuff in the game. Like, I can totally see an Assassin's Creed MMO, essentially, which is yeah. that. Yep, BR. Or yeah, BR. Or BR. Oh, my God, no. Dude, that'd the actually be honestly kind of cool. Assassin's Creed was pretty If rough. you have this new one in the Roman Empire, and you are playing a lobby of, like, 100 people, but there's also, like, civilians, it would oh be the God. ultimate game of chicken. If you kill a civilian, you're out. The map could also have boats, so you could have an aqua. Oh my god, I love this idea. I mean, yeah, I mean, you could do a lot. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but I still think that they're gonna. It's the stick with a game like that. They're gonna want to stick with no, yeah, yeah. a story. It's the based. ultimate spy versus spy game mode, though, because you're just trying to find other civilians who are not being normal, and you got to shank them. Well, I mean, they Constant they tried that, and it didn't do that well. I mean, uh, I think it was Brotherhood. Where you were trying to basically act low key, you were dressed as a normal character, and they would try to find you. Up until Rogue, they had a multiplayer aspect to every game after two. And that's the sad. most convoluted timeline you could have ever given me. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, before that's the, like ten years. Yeah, really. the before this game, but after this game, in a small window. Like, okay, yeah. right. uh, it was, I assume that's five games. Yeah, this sounds about right. Wing it. 
Doesn't matter. All right. Either way, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of news out there every week, but we we bring you the important <laughs> shit. Well, you're close. Yeah, close shit. I was say he was he was changing up his tone. I was like, I'm not falling for it. <laughs> <laughs> um. We have our own topics to talk about today, and I'm going to bogart the first one simply because Weird word. Mine shenanigans is a little bit more serious, and it also all three of ours involve gaming. I'd rather move from the serious into the more lighthearted as we go on forward. Because you didn't have a topic, Mark. It's like a shit I'm sandwich, trying, except the shit's to on the bottom. I've been trying to find a tech topic. I can't. I can't it get one. Have there's, to always be a tech. Not a Just what do you feel in your heart, Mark? What he feels in his Actually, heart. Actually, no. I was, was going to come back. The day of the podcast. I said what he feels in his heart the day of the podcast. He should prepare for the podcast <laughs> <laughs> instead of beforehand. I just wanted you to know that eventually, Mark, we're going to vote you off the island, and we're going to bring you on without telling you. We're going to have tiki torches, and we're going to put your torch out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's going to be an outdoor podcast. Just pre-warning. <laughs> oh, no. We're doing it in-house. Yeah. If we, if Big you see an outdoor <laughs> podcast, you know <laughs> something's going to go on. So, and Mark's like, why are we outside? Uh, <laughs> no. Now I'm going to be like, crap. Yeah. So, uh, interesting events happened over the course of last week into the weekend in which two uh, individuals who worked for ArenaNet, which is the developer behind Guild Wars 2, were fired over a Twitter exchange they had with a streamer. Um, it is intriguing Dumb. to see... What? No, nothing. Okay. Well, it was interesting because after the firing, the Reddit forum of fans who are fairly toxic towards some of these writers started banding together and stating the fact that they could basically get anybody fired by continuing this behavior, yeah. fighting with yep. employees. It's important to note that the two individuals who were fired, one of them was a woman who was a writer. Uh, she felt like she's being talked down to when talking to the streamer. Both her and the streamer had some rhetoric. I, I should have printed out what they said, but it's a long exchange. Um, both had rhetoric that would deem... Probably not offensive. the most civil. Yeah, hmm. I wouldn't say offensive. They were just, just like I don't know. They're kind of digging at each other, yeah. uh, but I would argue not fireable. Yeah, by any degree. And the other employee was fired for standing up for the female writer. Oh wow, no, that's not cool. So, uh, in social media, standing up. I for don't care. Yeah. So. Oh, I'm sorry. I have my buddies back. This is You're fired. A, opened up a similar topic which we've talked about before, which is the social media guillotine. Yep. But I find it intriguing yeah. here because we are actively seeing a group of individuals who have lauded power from this exchange, and I wanted to discuss it. And the companies just threw it away. Yeah. Instead of saying, hey, you guys suck. These are my guys. You suck. I don't really care about you. And their streamers would have been like, wow, that was harsh. What are you going to do about it? And the streamers are going to sit there and cry. Well, see, I think that I mean, it's definitely a, a lose-lose scenario. It's much like the PewDiePie scenario with Disney. Mm -hmm. Because as Guild Wars, you don't want to irk your streamers and your content creators, and you definitely don't want to make them seem like it's your people versus their people. But at the same time, like you shaft your people by making this call. Well, also, at the same time, those streamers, if they're dependent on your game to make money, they're also kind of like a pseudo-employee, so you should have the right to be like, hey, you need to chill out. Right, but when it's a sub-model as well, like if that streamer is big, and like, for example, if, say, Ninja told everyone to not play Fortnite, I feel like a lot of people stop playing Fortnite. Yeah. It's, yeah, you're not wrong. It yeah. is interesting because streamers like Ninja, they have actual contacts now yeah. that work with the developer. Yep. So this streamer theoretically has someone he can go to to leverage whatever complaints or at least start a discussion like yep. hey i want to go talk to him because i have a couple of ideas and instead chose a public platform and i think that's where it, it it's almost unfair to the employee because you are going to lose if you talk back in any form at least yep. that's what it appears to be there's totally. a proper forum for that kind of thing i mean even if you just sent somebody an email i mean yeah sending a tweet is one thing and realistically though they should have responded with, please contact us yeah. here if you really have any problems, you know, that kind of thing. It, like, it, there's a better way to handle it. I kind of understand the justification for firing them to some extent because they're representing the company. That, that, yeah. Like, if you're if you're openly being brash on a public forum as a representative of this organization, you make the organization look bad. And and, and that's that's how every company is, you know. Yeah. Yeah. See, sorry about that. My uh, my actual belief is complete opposite of that and that's kind of what i was actually talking to one of my roommates Kepley today about one of the contents with the content couch video that we're posting um talking about posting and replying to people who are not under like the i guess our named banner the strange banner where this channel lives um and i always think that it, it definitely feels better whether it's a company or a brand or a game or developers or whatever if say like we play a game called Realm Royale, which is made by High Res, mm -hmm. if the High Res Twitter account were to like say like, oh that's cool, we think this or whatever, I'd be like, oh that's neat. But if like 
high res Rue reaches out to me. I'm like, oh, cool. You're like a lead dev. Like, that's cool. Like, I feel a very personal, like, cool. I will gladly talk to you. Like, it feels more genuine. It feels like, I don't know, it just feels way better. Like, same thing with, like, a gaming organization because we've seen some more things happen this, like, in pro organizations. Like, a pro organization got kicked out of a tournament because their owner was talking crap on Twitter. And while I do understand that, at the end of the day, like, that's that guy. That's not necessarily the beliefs of the company. They probably don't believe this little kid and you suck and Let's whatever. Let's again, they represent the organization. I mean, though. if it was said out loud most of the time, it's not even brought to this kind of attention. But because it's on Twitter and because it's pretty yeah. much on print, it can be printed out, thrown on a screen, it's all of a sudden a big deal. Well, I mean, that- because the streamer also brings in dollar dollar bills. Yep. Yep. It, well, and it's a much bigger platform than saying, like, verbally saying something in front of people. Like, Twitter's definitely got a lot more, yeah. a it's, much more broad audience. I just still feel that people, like, a lot of the social media that has been around for a while is still young in a lot of the yeah. respects to company integration with the human existence and its interaction with the outside public in general. It's like you can't treat it like, oh, they're, you can't make them mad, but, you know, you, you could have your own self-respect too. And it's like, where do you draw the line then? Well, and that's exactly what I was going to say is I don't think either one of you are wrong in your beliefs. Yeah. It, it yeah. is completely true depending upon the situation, the scenario, and companies are going to have to get better about outlining what is and isn't acceptable. And as employees of those companies, you have to get better about understanding what is or isn't acceptable as an employee. As an employee, I would say, if someone talks to me openly about this, they're going to get what I say. Yeah. And if you don't like that, then ND, like, I can't talk on Twitter. That's fine. That's what I will do. But I won't, I'm not going to be subjected to your yeah, censorship. I'm not going to be subjected to abuse yeah. from a, from people yep. who are from anybody. I don't care. I it was actually going to be very interesting. Uh, I would be very interested to see what the co- the company's terms and conditions are mm-hmm. for employment because yeah. I have a strengthening feeling we're probably going to see this again and it's probably going to be those two people suing the brakes out of them and if I had to guess they're probably going to win yeah I mean yeah. just it, because very similar to what Google did recently like justifiable or not like if you give your employees the right of freedom of speech because we do live and work in America where you do have the freedom of speech a company can illicitly point out they say hey anything you say on Twitter is a representation of this company we can fire you for that but if they're just like don't like it or they didn't explicitly say that like that's just an outreach yeah. of power. Exactly. As yeah. long as you're not sitting there saying, I'm speaking for the company. Right. This is what we believe. I mean, you can, you have the ability to say what you want. You're not a spokesperson. Yeah. But as soon as you start saying we or anything like that, well, you're starting to get into to well, different Unless territory. it's highlighted in your terms of employment. If yeah. in your yeah. terms of employment, they say what you say out, like, we have a very good friend who works for an alcohol company. Yeah. He, he goes around and sells it. I'm not going to say who or yeah. what. And he is 100% in the public eye all the time. Like, he cannot act out, fight, do anything. If if something's going down at a bar, he typically leaves because that's his job. Which is yeah. a shame because yeah. I'd love to see that. <laughs> 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 but by the same token, also, if they have anything on them, on their profile, whatever it is that represents the company or even has the company's name in it, okay, you become a representative. Or For example, if you're at company name your first name or something like that your normal handle you know that kind of thing immediately representation of the yeah. company you're throwing the company's name on there LBG. Logo of the company in there how about Done. the lbg lbgt flag you show yeah. that oh that's not what our company represents you're fired yeah uh, where do you Is draw that, the line yeah. because there's actually government protection against sexual no actually education. there's not and that was actually proven today yeah I thought there was a new thing they had. It was was actually an an act that was initiated in 1964, but then it's based. Oh, it's been totally based on what the president views it as, and now apparently Trump doesn't feel that way. But yeah, it's a tricky situation because it is all the perception of the company along with the perception of the employee, and that's where we we have to draw a line. We here under the strange gaming banner don't give a hot. about what each other say <laughs> as long as you don't say anything about the company because if you talk bad about this company <laughs> yeah i mean that's always kind of been my thing. we're a joke <laughs> um mm. that's kind of always been like my mentality of like it just doesn't make sense to me like in a scenario like even if you're google or whatever like sure if you're in, if you're not being malicious and if i'm not saying like like if the employee was like i hope you die to the yeah. streamer like yeah. i get yep. that like you told them you wanted them to die that's a little messed it, up yeah but if you're like hey you're dumb like i don't understand why you think this like whatever it's like, like on, that's dude. sticks and stones me maybe my warrants yeah. like, words will never hurt me like yeah. come on I, if it's a death threat i got you that's bad if the other party is interacting just as hard 
Yeah. You yeah. can't sit there and go, mommy, mommy, he made my feelings yeah. hurt. I As would, a streamer, if I was to watch that streamer, I would tell him, I'm going to stop watching you because you are a pansy. Yeah. Thank you. And what would be actually really in- – I mean, I'm I'm not glad that the friend for sticking up for the lady got fired as well. But I would be very interested to see, like, how many people in that company are like, hey, if this is your views, I'm out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I agree. Absolutely. Because I totally think that needs to start happening. Like, mm-hmm. I know a lot of people – obviously, you had a job at Google. I don't really blame you. But if home dude would have gotten fired, I would have definitely been like, I'm probably going to bounce because yeah. it doesn't make sense. Because yeah. you want me to have a forum of free speech and you fired a dude for using it. And well, you're just you're talking about the guy who's fired. Companies are always yep. touting, yeah, yeah. you guys are what make the company. Yeah. You guys are what do this. And then as soon as we become the individuals and we become even the slightest bit of an inconvenience, it's like, oh, yeah, by the way. You've been cleaved from the herd. Yep. <laughs> the floor is yours. I, I, was going to, I was literally, I was like, I was debating. I was like, I don't know if I should That's say that. Or... Say. That's all we need to say. Uh, I do find it intriguing that it, in no way is this benefiting them. Not only are they getting public outcry and backlash yeah. now for yeah. the story, but they now have a toxic version of their community that now sees themselves in power over the company. Yeah. Like this is a lose for them entirely. Mm-hmm. 110%. Every, oh, yeah. No matter what publicly you should always stand behind your employee say look and you know to be honest uh, i hate to bring him up but trump he's always got everybody's back until they literally just are caught with their hands in the cookie jar smashing it over someone's face i don't know why i thought you're gonna make a sexual reference i got very i I thought about it because of the whole statue of liberty thing i was like no i can't do that Uh, i i do agree i think it's silly for a company to not stand behind their employees especially when you're talking about people who write the narrative for your game yeah like you should 100 percent back them you can let them go a month down the road and say hey we parted ways because we didn't agree on terms whatever the case may be but outright firing them within less than a week of the exchange you, it just you give away all your power hard. yeah well but all but of it because now anybody whines they're going to expect them to, to win and everybody everybody starts to feel like that's how things should be big companies like google and whatnot need to be the ones standing firm saying no you're not going to dictate us we yeah. are who we are you like what we bring or you don't get yeah. over it was the streamer attacking uh, based about something based on the company or based on the, the no, game? No, so the it was the streamer and the chick got into a verbal exchange based over on, the narrative. Over, over the, the story, narrative. Yeah. Okay, over so the narrative. The, well, I guess what I'm saying is, I, I like being the devil's, devil's advocate for that argument. Um, I understand that the company probably said you probably should have gone through the right channels. If you had come to us and said yeah. they have a problem with the with the narrative and are attacking me personally about it, then the company could have probably yeah, but they weren't sense. They weren't openly. I guess they didn't be. It wasn't a scenario where it's like, "Hey, insert name here, your story sucks." It was like, "Hey, I don't really like the story." And the person's like, "Oh, well, it's like this because of this." And like, so, "Oh, well, that's uh, dumb." And they're like, "Well, right, you're so dumb." So she just kind of jumped that's in. It, 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 yeah, that's not. Well, no, I mean, they it, were. It, it was both. Like, yeah, they were going at each other. Very even yeah. exchange on how. But it would be that. just like if in a scenario you're like the developer of any major game and you are watching a stream of your game, and somebody's like, "Hey, I don't get this," and you're like, "Well, it's because of this right here," and they're like, "Well, that's fucking retarded," and like. I'm sorry, you're fucking retarded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's pretty much exactly how it went. Yeah. Well, that wasn't very nice. <laughs> so, it, it's interesting. I think it's just a topic that needs to be highlighted because, A, companies can learn from this exchange. You definitely don't want to feed that kind of toxicity. There, I, I think we all agree at the table there are better ways to handle this scenario. Yep. Yep. And, and, B, I think we're going to see more things like this come up as we go further into the aging of social media. If we're going to – I mean, I think people need to grow a backbone a little bit more. If you're going to have yep. an idea where, hey, you have freedom of speech – Utilize it. Yeah. Yeah. It's yep. fine. If you're going to put yourself out there, you better expect backlash. That's just how it goes. Well, and, and anybody who's playing the game, if they did feel like the company treated their employees in, in wrongly, I mean, maybe bow out for a month or two of subscriptions. Yep. Use your yep. wallet. Yep. Yeah, Speak it's easy with your And if you're not in a country that has freedom of speech, then this doesn't apply to you, I guess. <laughs> I'm very sorry. And free the dude who got in trouble for teaching his dog to be Nazi. Like 270 sovereign citizens, 108 of have freedom. So dumb. <laughs> um, but I, I think we can move on uh, to. I say we go to Dylan next. I think that's a good. Dylan. Yeah, because segment. my topic's not happy at all. Okay. Because my topic is depressing. It's not depressing. It is depressing. It is not depressing. So what I want to talk about today is what does rare even mean in it video games? It is a games? company that made Sea Thieves. <laughs> no, that's I not I really it. wanted to tell that joke. I know. You probably time. stopped all that for like a week. <laughs> uh, but what does rare even mean in video games? Because this comes up, uh, Fortnite is re-releasing one of its most exclusive, most rare skins. And a lot of people are pretty tilted about it because it's a skin that if you played very early on, you got it. And if you didn't, you didn't. And now they're like, ah, we'll bring it back. 
And we see this quite frequently. Uh, a game I played for a very, very long time called League of Legends, uh, which you've obviously probably all have heard of. Um, they used to do skins, obviously. Lol. Yes, lol. Uh, they did skins and whatnot. Uh, but in these skins, if you obviously played the game very early on, you got crappy skins. They look like poop. But then as the game got better, they made the skins better and better, and they got rid of the old ones. So it was at a point in time when I was playing the game, and I had a couple old skins that no one else could buy. And I was like, look how long I've owned this game, and I still suck. <laughs> Watch me be terrible. Um, <laughs> I'll wear this poop skin. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but then it was like, I think, Christmas event or something like that. They slowly started releasing them back in timed events, and they're like, ah, we're just going to bring them back. And everyone's like, are you serious? I played this game four years ago, and I'm like one of like 5,000 people that have this crappy-looking skin, and everybody's going to have it. So that's why I think it's dumb. So many games are re-releasing uh, yeah. rare items. Like even Destiny. The first Destiny was so much harder to get exotics. The second one, they get more like candy. Yeah. Borderlands, the first one, Pearlescence, were like almost impossible to get. There's people that played it for like hundreds of hours. And, and never got one, yeah. yeah. So I just feel like we're losing the concept of rare in gaming, and are you accepting of this, or do you understand it? Because I know that we've all been new players in games, and we've also all been old players in games. I fall in two t- categories here, and I think there's only it two ways to go. Largely, <laughs> I think it largely depends on the game. Because on the one hand, I understand wanting that level of accessibility for new players to the extent that you're keeping your your. It's cosmetic. You're right. But that's still it's still something exciting. I think looking at Pokemon Go, they have all of their raids for rare Pokemon in timed events, and we know they're successful right now because they made what one point five million billion dollars. I don't know one point eight billion. Yeah, in the U.S. alone. So uh, over the course of the last year, so they do a very good job of hey, we're going to release these Pokemon to raids. You have a month to capture them, and then they've slowly been re-releasing them as timed quests or something along those lines for anybody who's either new to the game or missed them the first time around. It's hard to swallow on one hand because I'm like, man, I got this rare Pokemon. That's really nice. I like having this as my show-off piece. But on the other hand, I see the 10-year-old girl who started yesterday because her dad really likes it. She wanted to hang with her dad. I'm like, well, it'd be cool if she got one too. Like, I, I think there are other ways to do it that would make sense. Something like Fortnite would be great if they had those time skins and those time skins are it. But they just continue to release certain time skins. Like, well, see, my thing is like it's very similar to I guess that as well. I saw somebody on Reddit. Um, I want to say it was Noah J, um, but I'm not certain. Uh, who brought up a very interesting point? He's like, I don't understand why they're doing this when you have the easiest capability to make this right by both parties. And when you re-release it, just change the hue. Hey, this was a red knight before. Yeah, yeah. Really Make cool. it a blue knight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So then, cool. If you got the red knight, then you got the year old version. If you got the blue knight, you got the two year old version, or whatever the case yeah. may be. Yeah, it's just, just like thinking. Pokemon. If you have a legendary Pokemon, like, cool, you got the first one, awesome. Second one, shiny only. Yeah. Third one, it's purple. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of shiny. I never played a game <laughs> where I had this issue, but I could totally understand, especially in a game like League of Legends or something, like, or Fortnite, where it's got this community behind it that's so strong that yep. differentiating yourself with skins is a thing. That's where they're making yep. a good portion of their money. Why would you do that? Like, I love that idea. Like, because okay, you this know how many ten year old girls that just started playing the game are like, oh, I really want this old skin that five hundred people have, and then everyone's like, I'm gonna buy that. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, this exactly. is the rarest skin in the game. Guess what? It's not now. Yeah. Nope. yeah, exactly. I do like that idea of changing it somewhat cosmetically yeah. Yeah. just to showcase it. You could even do something smaller than a hue of like, hey, here's the signified badge for year two. Like something yeah. dumb, yeah. but at least so- showing like, hey, you got the round one, you got the round two. Yep. Yeah, and I mean, it's not just, I guess, cosmetic things. Well, that's kind of something I did, like the Borderlands. Like, you yeah. guys both play Division, and once you get towards the end of Division, every gun is the same. What is it, purple's high rarity? Gold. gold. Or gold. Gold, well, um, red, technically. Red, technically, because they're exotics. Um, but, but those weren't seemingly difficult to get. You could get them. They weren't necessarily That like, was based on your level up, though. I, I, right. feel, I feel like that's a different experience simply because... In that game, it's not about getting the gold gun. It's yeah. about getting the best gold gun. Right. And what that means is you got to level up. you got to go fight the hardest enemies. Like, the the pearl essence of that is yeah. still deep in the meta game. It's just whether or not you care enough to get there. Yeah, it's, we it's saw one exotic there. the entire time we played that game for the longest time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And it's, it was a knee pad. <laughs> Super dumb. Super dumb. Oh, so annoying. While everybody's walking around with the show going, oh, you're dead. <laughs> well, I think uh, Destiny was another one that was super disheartening because the first one exotics were very hard to get. 
Um, and then they added in Zer, this dude that allowed you to buy him. Yeah. And then it quickly spiraled downhill. It was like, oh, I only like I only have one exotic gun, and I have one exotic armor. And I played the game for like four or five months, and it's like, oh, this guy sells like three a week. And you're like, well, that's dumb. Yeah. No, I, I tried so hard to get I, this. And I, I, just just I just see it as a money train. I, I, yeah, well, well, totally that's is. the worst part is you don't even buy more money. Yeah, hmm. it's in game. Well, I mean, <laughs> what, do you think this is gonna literally, like legitimately ruin the game for people to the point where they stop playing it? I mean, like that was what he said with, with Pokemon. That is a good. 30% of the reason why I quit the second time. Because I was like, oh, this is cool. And y'all thought, oh, you're going to realize? I don't care. That's dumb. Yeah, I mean, it totally <laughs> can break the game. It, it's a weird it, – because it, whatever your percentage of exotics is, as long as you continue that percentage to the point where an equal amount of people, like, grow with that, then you're not going to technically break the game, especially if it's PvP. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not break the game, but – just spoil it to the point oh, where people yeah. stop oh, yeah, playing yeah. it. Yeah. Well, see, I think well, the Pokemon Go example to me is, like, it's very interesting because I remember when the Legendary Raids came out. Like, I wasn't playing at all. And at our old job, uh, me, you, uh, and two of our other buddies yeah. started going to raids. And I was like, oh, this is cool. I'll come help because you guys needed help with, like, a tower yeah. or something. I was like, oh, I'll re-download this stupid game and play with you guys whatever. So then we started going to raids and stuff. And I remember how tilted you were because you didn't have that. Articuno was the first one. And you didn't have it. And it was like, I got like three days left. And I was like, and then we kept going and going and going because you got like two raid passes a day or something. And then we were to raid one day and I was like, hey, Brent. And then you're like, get the fuck out of here. (laughs) But I just remember like, that was like, it was cool when it was like, I could. Not that I didn't want you to have it, obviously, but I could just see how passionate you were as a big fan about getting this. And as much as you cared if you wouldn't have gotten that, that would, to me, have been a testament of, like, how rare this thing really is. Like, it's kind of RNG or whatever, but, like, still, like, if, say, only 40% of the gaming population gets this, like, that's that's some real stuff. Like, you have to play and try hard. Yeah. Um, And to me, there's, like, I don't know, there's, like, a level of, like, honor, coolness in that. I, I think that can still exist. It just depends on the developer, and that's the hard part. Is how yeah. how do you make that work? The, the biggest complaint I heard about Borderlands One with the pearlescence is that they were so rare, a majority yeah. of players didn't find Never them, yep. and so didn't even know it existed. My roommate didn't think it was real, and so <laughs> Gearbox themselves said, "Well, we want to make it so that people understand that this is a thing." Like, yeah. there is a level of balance there, but I I don't disagree. Having some cool stuff, cosmetic or otherwise in a game is awesome i would love especially games that update continuously something like fortnite or even narrative games like final fantasy 15 which continues to release patches and content all the time yeah. would be really cool if they're like hey day one you got this outfit we're never gonna release it again like that yeah. Yeah. it's just an outfit yeah, there you go. something yeah. small i totally like that idea i understand why companies are are moving away from it and then there are times where again i see another player who's like that's really cool and i'm like well you know, maybe I'm being a little selfish. Yeah, I mean, like, I think WoW is another great example as well is because WoW has some mounts from the early days that you can't get. There's just only so many of them or they were exclusive things or whatever. I guess you could buy them like a marketplace or something for an obnoxious price, but there's a limited quantity of them. Mm-hmm. And to me, like, that is awesome. I agree with that. Like, the fact that that dude has been playing this game for 18 years and he has a mount to show for I'm like, hey... Good yeah. stuff, buddy. Well, not yep. only You're that, dedicated. You can sell that on a marketplace. I always thought that would yeah. be an amazing concept for an online game where you could physically sell the items and the get the publisher continued to release or the developer continued and to release. And another reason <laughs> Star Citizen <laughs> will be the I greatest game if it up. doesn't fail. You're going to yeah. be so disappointed. I am. You're going to make a lot You're of You're going to buy. <laughs> Take me with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, the, the cool thing about, like, their concept, and grand totally concept. This may never work. I mean, we know how far the game's come along for hundred eighty million dollars. Tomorrow we hear they go belly up. No. Well, they actually just showed the new three three stuff yet today, yesterday, something like that. Um, but uh, their concept is for like the ships and stuff. Like the in the universe, the stuff has to be mined that is required to make the parts to make the ship. And like it is a total real process that happens, even though AI may be doing the jobs. So if like you run out of, I don't know. Viridian steel or whatever your Miranda made up material is then like you can't make any more of these ships and then if they make a new model and say it's like this year's Mustang versus next year's Mustang like 
there are no more 2018s. That, that is it. They yeah. made a finite amount. Yeah. So like, and those ships can blow up and stuff. So it's like there might only a, be one left. There one could day. be one left one day. And like yeah. to me, that concept is just so awesome. awesome. It is really cool. Yeah. It is really cool. Just the thought of that is so cool. I also don't want every game to do that. <laughs> like, <laughs> in no way do I want to go to Pokemon and be like, this is the only EV ever. There's only three. <laughs> How many Mews do you think there should be? There is only one. One. Each person, each player can only earn one. That Mew doesn't and mean there's only one. It. What? That means there's thou- millions. Oh, yeah. But I'm sorry. There's only one Mew per. Player. Imagine if there was a hundred. There's only one Mew for you. No, that'd be annoying. I got a Pokedex for that, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 I'm not catching that Mew. I know that for a fact. No, then your Pokedex, you just got to see it. That's all you got to do. No. See it, and you get a little thing in the That's what they did start doing in game, which I think is the most genius idea ever. What? In, in the core franchise, because there's over 750 of them now, yeah. like you, in order to fill out your Pokedex, you just have to see it. They're like, you don't have to catch them all. <laughs> yeah. Like, Thank you. That saved me a lot of items. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Um, but I, hopefully we'll see something counterbalancing. The problem is something like Fortnite is so popular. The people who are clamoring for the skin are way more than the people who are like, no, leave this just to us, man. Well, they banned, uh, the, so in the Friday night Fortnite's a huge tournament series ran by Keemstar. Um, it's pretty awesome. Ninja actually won for the first time two weeks ago, but the guys who won last week, um, are t and, uh, Phase t and Cloakie. Uh, t who is the probably the best player in the world right now he's won five out of the nine events now um wow he has his account got banned from fortnite like three weeks ago because he bought his account because it had a whole bunch of old skins on it he couldn't get anymore but then they banned him because you can't sell accounts yada yada so they banned his account so he decided to make a new one a free one or whatever um and i think it's one i think it's dumb because one they just built hype to your game and two like it's whatever yeah yeah why i mean you used to be able to do that with wow you used to be able to sell your accounts I don't know if WoW wants you to do that, but I don't think WoW cares that you do that. Yeah. Fortnite seemingly cares. If Why? You do that. I don't like, know. how does that hurt them? But you know, I because they because they want to care about the fact that you have these you know very secretive skins until they decide to re-release them. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. Uh, I understand. now it doesn't matter. I understand what, <laughs> what you were talking about, Brent. Though, of like, yeah, there's more people that are like, well, we really want this, that kind of thing. So the problem is they try to appeal to masses, but the problem is then the core audience, the guys who have been around for. 18 years on WoW, yeah. you know, suddenly if, if WoW started re-releasing that stuff, those guys are going to be like, you don't really care about me, so yeah. I'm going to leave. Yeah. Well, and that's the problem is that Fortnite, in all intents and purposes right now, is the fad. Yep. Yeah, it like, is. Like, so they probably don't care a whole lot about the people who were there from day one because right now they've got millions of people who will be here for the next year, and then next year they're going to bounce unless they bring something else new. So. You heard it here first. Just because of that, drop them. Yep. Everyone stop Like playing. it's hot. Like I said, well, I mean, that is one oh, way like, to yeah. speak with your wallet. Once again, yep. stop by and stop playing. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. It's just painful to me because I am very passionate about, like, like we were talking about Fortnite last week. Yeah, in the scenario. Epic. What? This oh, is epic. I thought you meant it was epic. Like, wow, cool, epic, not like the company. Uh-huh. Um, but, like, we are talking about with the event. Like, I think yeah. if there would have been an in-game badge for saying that you were at the event, like, to me, that is awesome. Then if you ever put that in-game badge and you gave it to someone else later, yeah. I'd be like, you're stupid. Yeah. Get that out of here. I don't care. Yeah, I agree. And that's why I just think, I don't know. And CSGO does, I think, a fantastic job because they do, uh, with their skins, there's only a limited quantity of them. Now, granted, mm-hmm. it's however many people buy the thing in the window. But, like, the older skins, because the game wasn't that popular, there may be only a couple hundred of a certain old skin. See, that's genius. Exactly. That Guess what? You sell it on the design. Steam marketplace where you make 10% of the money yeah. of that $4,000 knife. Or better yet, make knife. one of this suit, like, in real life. And hide it somewhere and say, you find the suit, you get to keep it. Well, they just did the real life thing. They just put a that burger, burger in the middle of fucking yeah. Uh, well, I was saying continue that, but like to gain PR back, if they would actually. Well, they did. Oh, yeah, they did eight. Only eight of the little llama pinatas. Yeah. They gave eight of those away to special people. I think I think there's some cool stuff you do there. I like that concept where it's like, hey, 48 hours, buy this suit. And however many there are, that's the economy. That's yeah. it. That's all the suits. But that then you made. allow it to be resold. That's the important part. And they're allowed to be resold. Yeah, yeah, I think that is the important part there. So. Because I think it's very fascinating. Like uh, CSGO did one where one of their skins was copyrighted and they didn't know it. This uh, You can submit your own skin if you want CSGO, and if the community likes it, it gets put in the game. They'll like ask you for permissions on the rights, and they specifically say, do you own the rights to this? The home dude did not. They put it in the game, and then the original artist was like, why is my thing in the game? <laughs> so then they had to pull it from the case, but they couldn't take it, obviously, from, from people. people who had it, so yeah. there are still, like, I don't know, maybe a couple hundred in game tops, but it is super valuable. That's awesome. Interesting. See, it does create an interesting dynamic. Once again, I don't think this is something that should be in every game, but I definitely Shall think that there are you know some. It. They should be more games, yeah. One view, you know it. No, 
Get out of here. One meal. Oh, my hundred, maybe. No, get out of here. I want my what, are, what are those a hundred Avatar Airbenders? You wouldn't care. He wouldn't be the last one. Mew is the last. Unless they were all fighting the each other, last. then that would be really cool. We're gonna move on to our next topic. The last. <sighs> yeah, the last topic. <laughs> it's not called the last Mew. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't he like the last legendary, or whatever? Uh, there's, there's. No, he's technically the first. Technically, Arceus is the Pokemon god. We don't need to go into Pokemon more. It's broken as <laughs> hell. <laughs> uh, John, you wanted to talk to us about franchises in turmoil. Yeah. So How did we go from negative to negative to negative? I thought you said there was positive. I know. I realized I thought my topic was going to be much more negative. Well, than this it is going to have a positive because it, we're going from something that's bad to good. And quite honestly, we were way more positive on my topic than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that. Well, I mean, we all talk about franchises that are, you know, suffering right now at the hands of dumb people who don't know what they're doing or people who don't have vision. You know, coming back in Devil May Cry 5. Why? Why are we talking about Marvel? Vision? can be if you want to. We got our snarky comment. Then continue, please. (laughs) (laughs) Just keep talking. Uh, talking. I'm talking about personally in games, but also that actually is a good point, even though it was dumb. (laughs) That we could talk about movies or yeah. comic books, even. Oh, God. Um, I don't want to go down that path. Everybody's got their <laughs> strengths and weakness, so yeah, I right. want to give everybody an opportunity to do their best. Um, like, for instance, like for me, Mirror's Edge. Mirror's Edge was a great game when it came out. It got me back into gaming. It was, it was really big for me. And then Catalyst came out, and I just it wanted poked. to vomit all over the place. Yeah, yeah. And it was just like you totally missed out on what the hell was special about this game. Mm-hmm. And you tried to make an Assassin's Creed out of it, and you screwed up. Mm-hmm. And I just would say, well, how would you want to save these IPs, essentially? What IP would you choose, and how would you save it? And my first one is Mirror's Edge. Going back to the storyline perspective, yeah, mm-hmm. you continue on the uh, first person, making you nauseous as you're going through buildings and flying over stuff and fighting people, but also giving them more options to entrance and exits and giving them better storyline giving them the option to be a pacifist or an aggressor um it it just there's so much you could do more that way more the tall tale way than the uh the way of okay we're gonna make this an open world and you're gonna skyline everywhere and do parkour here and there that's really freaking broken parkour parkour i do feel like the best mirror's edge too is dying light i feel like that does mirror's edge too you're right they did it (laughs) they were the second they should have been the ones to make that game not cool technology. Yeah. It was just that Dying Light was a beautiful game. What would you and do? Move so well. Increase the storyline. Uh, make it to where you have multiple entrance and exits that mm-hmm. you can choose from. So that way you can vary how you complete a level, which Some would make it fun. Time trials are already a thing. Some people are time trial people. It was okay. It's It didn't grab me as much as it did others. But when I joined the community, man, that's all they were talking about were time trials. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go do this over here. I always thought in a game like Mirror's Edge, because I watched you play a lot of it. Yeah, you I, did. I never played it myself. I was sitting um, on his bed playing on this tiny TV, <laughs> and I'm like, this is the coolest thing ever. I'm like this far from the TV. I think um, instead of doing straight-up time trials where it is the really cool architecture, but it is like, hey, here's a 3D space run around. you got a timer on it. To put collectibles in spaces that you have a limited amount of time to get to and from there or, you know, to the location and then back around whatever exit. Well, they do actually have those in Catalyst where yeah. you have to go grab it and then get to a location. Like it, it, They have those, but the traversing is just god-awful. See, I think if you design something like that where it is, it can be exploratory in these levels but not require like, oh, I've got to stare at the clock and make sure I beat this time. I think that would be engaging and interesting. Plus, you could hide lore in those collectibles. Yeah, and you could also like put take the time off if you want to enjoy it or do like yeah. some kind of like going around looking for collectibles or whatever. That's cool, too, because there were collectibles in the first one. Yeah. They were usually hidden in vents and random alleyways that you were like, I wonder if I go over there and you could and you found something. You're like, oh, you know, it's just that experience. It just was gone Yeah, in Catalyst. Yeah. VR is a good way to. There's, uh, it's you're perfect be for sick I was the say, entire VR's time. Way to no, I mean you get used to it. Like I got used to rigs, and that was pretty rough. Yeah. And yeah, you could I do also, rigs, you could do that. I also think that you could get away with it in a almost super hot esque way, of the sense of it's like yeah, kind of bursty. Like super hot can be kind of nauseating if you just went back to back to back to back to back. But it's like more of like you got to move quickly and figure out the scenario. Like Mirror's Edge, it could be like I'm here. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna do this. I need to do this. I need to do this. Go. 
That yeah. would be super interesting. I, I mean, even... as you're running, you could be looking for other exits yeah. and yeah. just trying to see what you're doing. And you're controlling everything. And, like, I just – I could feel it already. Yep. Like, that would be hmm. freaking That on point. would be really cool. And you could break it up with segments of, like – I can just imagine her – Breaknecking into uh, a building, and there's like a glass elevator going up. So she like busts through the window, and then you're just sitting there waiting kind for the elevator to go. Yeah. And that's your mm. like time to like break for a second, yep. take a breath. It's the three, two, one. Door opens, and then you go. Oh well, yeah, when you that's slam really cool. through a door in Mirror's Edge, like it is just it's something you feel that thud, yeah. and it's just like bam, and you're just also coming think, through like you're. Also think it can mm. do great things with the combat too, because yeah. I mean you could do somewhat super hot esque where you can throw something at people. You mm-hmm. actually have to shoot and hit them. Yeah. Um, and I think it'd be like a very I don't know unique spin. Yeah, well, they yeah, have yeah. a passive really cool. aggressor in the first one. You could sh- you could go through the whole game without even hitting somebody. You could. I won't. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I almost killed everyone. That's like I tried to do, uh, what was the other, Dishon- no, it wasn't Dishonored. It was Dishonored. It was a trophy for beating the game without killing anyone. Yeah. yeah. I made it like halfway out the prison. I was like, nah, <laughs> snap. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I always enjoy games that give you the opportunity. I just never take it. <laughs> nope. <laughs> it's like, ah, that'd be cool. Nah. nah. Stealth well, or st- violent? Yeah. I was about to say, stealth <laughs> or bombastic? I understand because when I play Far Cry... I'm yeah. like, sometimes I'm, like, I'm feeling kind of sneaky right I now. I want them to sound the alarm. <laughs> I don't want them to bring in <laughs> reinforcements. Well, that's when I bring out the RPG and the grenade launcher, and I'm like, boom, boom, you know. I do that in middle girl time where I like, I'll, especially in five, I would knock everyone out, fool them out, leave, and then just blow something up. And like, that's right. I did it. Yep. Uh, mine, the, the thing I would salvage would be the Percy Jackson movie franchise because the books are fantastic. I've talked about this before. The movies are god awful. Yeah. Great cast, terrible premise. And how I would salvage this is that in the book franchise, there is a distinction between Percy Jackson and his friends, and then the 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 Greek gods, and then there's like a sequel series that involves the Roman Romans. gods and the Greek like variation on the same god, and how the Greeks didn't even realize there were Roman demigods. So like there's a whole other camp and all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. But a great way to introduce the whole dilemma, because in the second movie, they killed the bad guy. It's like, cool, that was the great franchise. It was terrible. Yep. So starting anew from that point of view, or diving into any other of Rick Riordan's books, because his whole series is interconnected with different uh, mythologies. So there's like an Egyptian mythology. Norse is really hot right now, so I could totally see him diving into Norse mythology, which takes place in Boston. Egyptian mythology takes place in Queens, like... They're, they start in different locations and they travel outward. I think with a solid cast, and instead of making it a movie, I would probably do the Netflix, HBO, eight episodes, WC. hour long. No. No, it needs to be streamable, so that way they can go, we're making eight episodes. I'm like, so you want to make 13? No, we're making eight episodes. That's all this needs. All you got to do is give them the laurel. Laurel. <laughs> laurel. But I, I think that's a great way to adapt some of these books. Because I think Harry Potter, obviously – like brought in the cash cow dollar, mentality. Dollar fucking yes. Yeah. <laughs> Where everyone's like, let's just take every young adult novel and make it into a movie. And not everyone needs to be a movie. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, television series would work out just fine. You got to tell the story a little bit more. You can't get away with the shortcuts. Yeah. And there's certain books that lend themselves better to it. Like I think. <clears throat> Arms Foul. Arms Foul. I think yep. the original Percy Jackson would have been great as a TV series because there is fantastical stuff, but a lot of it can be done practically. Mm-hmm. There's this, there's such a cool fight where Percy fights Apollo on Venice Beach in California, and the way it works in the world is like anybody who's not able to look into the mystical realms of normal people, they just whatever their brain imagines is what they see. So whatever bombasticness happens, their brain has to come up with a rational explanation for why. So Percy's fighting. Aries and he is like because he's the god of war he's like I got a rocket launcher I've got AK-47s and this kid is using the ocean to fight around and eventually like puts him down on a knee and apparently the entirety of the scene people saw like a militia come in and like tear down the beach but like that's easy practical effects to a cool yeah Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I'm rambling but I do think that's a great scenario and a great use of a franchise and honestly something that could reinvigorate pulling from those because i definitely feel like we've fallen off of pulling from young adult books specifically you like, heard it uh, here first guys percy jackson do it right yeah do it right do it tight <laughs> don't <laughs> exactly. do that ever again every right. day please um i had mentioned before halo 
Mm-hmm. Halo is very much falling off the horse. I kind of want to touch on a different one, though, because I, I've been sitting here thinking about it just because I am one festering. of... Festering. What? You were festering. A little bit. It was. I was kind of mulling over the idea here because Battlefield's kind of falling off the horse. Hmm. Battlefield had tried to become a Call of Duty competitor and Online. very much cannot. Yes. Now, this may be like the most out there idea, but I think they should reboot Medal of Honor to take that title. Ooh. Interesting. That's okay. not a bad idea. Medal of Honor and Call of Duty were always side by side as far as the World War II reenactment games and that kind of thing, all the way up to the line until which was the most. It was just called Medal of Honor, wasn't it? It was yeah. just yeah. called Medal yeah. of Honor, yeah. yeah. It was. Like an arc it, had but the it, music for the trailer. Yeah. It, it was probably the worst game. It flopped so hard. Yeah. But oh, the yeah. problem is is that they dropped that and said, no, 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 because Medal of Honor you know, has such a bad name, now we're going to use Battle- Battlefield to make that the, the Call of Duty competitor. But the problem is is that it can't be. Yeah. Battlefield is such a different game, and as a an OG player of Battlefield from 1942 up, like it, it really needs to be back to what it was for the core players and back to what it was for the large amount of people that actually really played it when it came out. I mean, don't I you prob- think that if it went the direction that it was, it was because it was making the money? Well, say, exactly. I would probably say that all the Battlefield sales of 3 didn't equal what Black Ops 2 did. Black so, Ops 2 was pretty bad. So they were probably like, okay, we know where we need to go. <laughs> But what I'm saying is, like, if they stuck with the large their battlefield sandbox killed them environment, if they didn't. <laughs> like, and went back to the roots anyway of what Battlefield was when the game came out, and brought back Medal of Honor to take the take the place of small map, short uh, short round, you know, <laughs> gameplay anyway, not big open sandbox world, you know, like like Battlefield falls into that niche. Let Medal of Honor take that title. I would be good. I was gonna say I actually don't think that's a bad idea because you could do what. Activision does with three studios now cycling through is you release you let Battlefield be its own thing. It's going to be something bigger, more bombastic, more online focused. Right. It's bombastic your word of the day. Bombastic is my word okay. of the day. Apparently. Brought to you by bombs. Um, oh, I think terrorist. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, I was talking about blowing up a beach. So I think what you can do though is that you, if you want to oh, compete oh, with Call of Duty oh, that oh, badly, Call of Duty's flip flopping back and forth. We're doing World War Two. We're doing Black Ops Four. Titanfall is what you're used to combat their futuristic. Well, they combated AW real hard. I mean, Titanfall was a super good competitor yeah, for yeah. all my and, and that's what I'm saying is you use that and to compete with the whenever they're releasing okay. a, uh, a Call of Duty in the future, right. and you use Medal of Honor to compete with whatever Call of Duty is in the back end mm-hmm. uh, for the the past. And and I was about to see. I was just in, in my to head. Me, it's been long enough now that Medal of Honor that that name. Yeah, One, yeah. It, I mean, it wouldn't wouldn't affect because people. Would probably be like, yeah, all right, that game was kind of crappy, but it's been long enough. You can get your crap together, you know. Yeah. Like, well, I think it's more of the fact that everyone is probably like, just why did you do that, EA? Because their master plan of that Medal of Honor game was like, here's what we do: we make a game, we let that studio make a campaign that doesn't talk to this studio that makes a yeah. multiplayer game. They're completely separate. They play completely differently. They're basically two separate games. Yeah, yeah. One package. Yep. Yeah. No. Uh, which. Yeah, that obviously was a bad idea because it kind of flopped, me it of, like, flopped before it even player. sold, yeah. before it launched. So we've talked about resistance multiplayer. We could talk off. off. Yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah no, it, I I think Medal of Honor reboot for Call of Duty style gameplay and don't try to make it a competitor of Call of Duty. Don't make Battlefield a competitor of yeah, Call of Duty. Yeah, I think that's actually pretty smart if EA could because they own the IP still. They're just sitting on it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you might as well flex it. Yeah, sitting exactly. On it. Like a squatty potty. But uh, like touch, a squatty potty. Touch back to Halo Three. Should have killed it when should have killed it when Bungie left. Squatty bodies. They should kill been. Destiny while it's already dead. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let it go. Uh, for mine, I wanted to what no. Let it go. Uh, for mine, uh, I wanted to touch on a quick one, real quick, that I think uh, is just something that we're talking about EA, and it's just something I don't understand why Call of Duty and a lot of people don't do, but mainly EA. Why instead of selling for sixty dollars every single year? You sell Madden and FIFA and NBA and all these iterative games. You change nothing. So make a new one every four years. I don't care. What you do is you have a $20 entry into your EA Access. It costs you $20 to join the first time. And then it's $10 a month. And then you just let them play the sports games and you update the rosters and teams and trades and, and all this stuff. And if they drop it off, they have to pay another $20, 20 to get $20 to re-enter. Yep, that's how you threaten them to don't don't leave me. <laughs> <laughs> this guy hostile. <laughs> you don't leave me. This is Stockholm but, eventually. 
<laughs> I would I would argue that you need to lower it to five dollars a month. But if you put it at twenty dollars entry and five dollars a month, you totally cover your costs and make more money. Well, see, I think $7. if you have more games, because if you have the if you have the NBA, the Madden. Oh, you're talking about combining all of all their of sports. them. Yeah, all sports, oh. like a sports. I was game. thinking specifically well, individually. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I say, maybe maybe if, maybe you did like a. Individual packages that you could do for like three or five dollars a month, and then do like an all sports package. Well, see, I think the sports month. package makes sense because then if you do that and you pay like for a total year, you're gonna spend 120 bucks. You'd get four sports games, which would normally be 240. Whereas if you're EA, you know they're really not gonna buy four sports games a year. They're maybe gonna buy one or two, so you can break even. Yeah. Yeah. Also, it's what's it gonna cost you development wise to ship a new disc every year for four years, or ship one disc. And be like, oh, here's no LeBron's discs. on the Lakers now. Change. <laughs> Got Di- it. A digital buy would be yeah. the best scenario for them. They would make massive amounts more you, money. Yeah. You'd mm-hmm. still sell the original iteration of it in a disc because yep. people will still buy it. Even yeah. even to con- for confused buyers who are like, oh, I have to connect online. Well, this is useless. I just wasted $20. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the actual one that I want to talk about, and it is not just a game. Sneaky-ass twofer. Yeah, he is a twofer. I am twofer. I'm about to be a twofer after him, though. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a game. This isn't a movie. This isn't a franchise of normal merit. This is a lifestyle. You can't redo your life. I'm sorry. Star Wars. I knew you were going to yeah. bring up Star Wars. I knew it. Because I think there's a lot of stuff that needs to be rebooted in Star Wars. I think the movie movies. saga, just you need to end the Solo saga. That's got to go. Skywalker? Or Skywalker saga. I don't yeah. know why I said Solo. Because the most recent movie. I knew what he meant. I just but, totally went there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Skywalker saga needs to end, and that needs to be it. And then we just need to ride off into the sunset. You got nine. You're done, family. I agree. Yep. You're out of here. Um, but I think you can do so much with this franchise, and that's from a gaming standpoint, from a book standpoint, from a comic standpoint, everything. Yeah. I think what you sh- – if it was me and I was Disney and I owned this IP, what I would do is I would make the comics books completely lore, completely he said, non-canon, let artists do what they want. Yeah. Now, obviously, don't let them, like, disrespect things or whatever. Yeah. Just yeah. be obnoxious. But, like, be like, hey, you write about this faction or this dude or this thing, and then you can write about something similar, and y'all might be wrong. And then it's like the fans are like, well, which one's right? And then, so you got that, you know, you care about what you care about. I don't know what you're doing. I'm totally making Boba Fett gay. Uh, if you want to, go for it. Thank sure. you. Boba Fett's uh, running around with a hard on. Hey, yeah, he's he's going to hunt you, and he's going to hunt you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jesus. <laughs> But uh, I think that that's what you should do with the comics. You should totally make it non-canon, allow artists to be creative, and let that be an awesome way that Disney could like pull the Sony card of, like, we help out indie people be like, we don't just give this to Max Landis or Big Riders. We give yeah. this to anyone who has a cool idea, yeah. and it's not too far off from reality or whatever, and it can be anything. It can be about the Mandalorians. It can be about the Skywalkers. It can be whatever. Yeah. Well, the best part of that is they can take the best of both worlds and make another movie out of whatever is trending. Well, yeah, whatever yeah. works. And then I think, one, you totally get the content there. I think the book series, if you want to keep the book series canon, keep the book series canon, yeah, that's fine. and then just allow like maybe your team to do that and do what you want with it. You want to do a backstory on Mandalorian? You want to do a backstory on Sith or whatever? Like, cool. Yeah. Have your people do that, and like that can be your thing. Because the fans, if you're a dedicated Star Wars fan, you're gonna read the book anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you could totally just have an offshoot branding called like Other Worlds or whatever yeah. you want to call it. Like those, these are spinoff things that aren't necessarily canon. You figure out what you like and you go with it. Yep. Yeah. And then I think in terms of the gaming universe or whatever, I think God, you could such a detriment. What? It's such a detriment. There's not a good Star Wars game yeah. out there right and now. And what kills me is like Other than, uh, you have Republic. you have the capability and you have everything you need. And I think they're going about it the wrong way. I think what you do is if you want to do an MMO, which I think is one thing that you want the easiest cash grab yeah. ever, mm-hmm. MMO Star Wars, you just don't use Jedi and Sith. Yeah. You just do Mandalorian. Let everybody be a bounty hunter. You yeah. can do what you want. You choose your path, good or evil. Who do you want to help? Is an Old Republic an MMO? Yes. Yes. KFDR. Yeah. And it's still yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah. But I think the the mistake there is you try to go down this like, oh, you're a Jedi or, or Sith, Sith path. Yeah. And I think if you if you let people be bounty hunters, you can be good or bad. You can do what you want. You choose the you and choose. And there's no judgment there because exactly it's, it's like, whatever. hey, do I want to take this contract to help the Jedi do this thing, or hey, do I want to take a contract to go fight the Empire or whatever? It doesn't have to be Jedi. It doesn't have to be Sith. It could be anything. You also allow them to create any race they want. It's so easy. It's yeah. like the whole thing is laid out in front of you. Um, but then you can still make your. I think you should have an MMO, and then I think you should have a like Uncharted, Last of Us, like Star Wars great 13, story. Thirteen. Yeah, it's almost you like you had did it. it. Yeah, you had like, it. Nah, get it out. God. 
because there's there's characters that we already care about, and then my issue with Star Wars and the reason that I wanted to bring this up is because to me Star Wars stands to be the most well set up universe we have. So like, just imagine a dumb idea of like a Netflix series of a TV show. Like it could be something like a house show, yeah. But it's just in that universe. Yeah. Like yeah. you could just make anything. In that universe, you already have baseline a million people who are going to watch yeah. it. Yep. Baseline. And if it's good, the world probably. So it's like, I just don't get it. Because you could just do anything. You Like you Netflix spinoff, you can just make it normal stuff. You can make it crazy stuff. You can make it Bounty Hunter. You can make it the olden days or whatever you want. Blue Milk Farmer. <laughs> yeah, sure. Whatever. Sure. It could be like the Food Network for whatever. <sighs> could you imagine a House of Cards version of Politic? politics yeah oh, with the that'd be That'd crazy be like wow. 500 years before episode one yeah. oh my god it'd be amazing yeah. <laughs> because it would be like normal real life stuff followed by there's this crazy dude <laughs> he can like i don't know he doesn't die it's really weird uh we think he's died like 10 times but yeah. he's still here and he's over there hopefully he stays over there that's all i got this is a uh, dark sector three out <laughs> yep there you, go. you can make your own storyline where duck face is sith lord there you go no. <laughs> I think we all know he is. He's um, a Sith Lord. I definitely wow. think that they are su- – like because the comics are pretty good. Books yeah. are doing pretty well. I like your idea of expanding that out to let people just play. Yeah. Love that idea. Because my issue with the comics right now is like it feels so like templated. Yeah. Like it's like, oh, I know it's going to go. All right. I don't need to read this. Well, I, don't, I don't even care. They're definitely being safe about it. Yeah. In and a it's lot like, of respects. Yeah. And it's like, come on, dude. You've got something amazing. But that's here. like to Be me, risky. like I read comics because they're ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. I don't read comics because I want to be proven that Darth Vader is going to do this thing that I think he's already going to do. Arguably, I think they they get away with it because of the nuance. Like, the Darth Vader comics specifically, there's so many points where you see him, like, break out for a second. But the problem always is, is it's an off, it's a panel. And then he's back onto what you knew he would do anyways. I just think, oh, he's super tilted. Oh, he's fine. Yeah. People, they're always looking for the easy thing that's not going to upset the most amount of people, well, and that's why they end up doing that. I don't even think it's about upset so much as Disney is very much in control, and they have a, a vision, and they want to make sure everything funnels into that vision. We've seen yeah. that with how Marvel handles all of their films. We've seen that with how Disney is now starting to handle Star Wars, and I agree that's a detriment to that because you're right. That universe of any universe is rife. Yeah. Rife like, for exploration. And I think that there was – um. The original start to Civil War, like in the comics, um, is based upon this group of kids who were like crappy superheroes, like super like C-list superheroes, um, and they're being followed around with cameras and whatnot. So when they're being followed around with cameras, that's when it kind of goes all to crap, and that's when they're like, oh, we got to name superheroes, and we got to have a list and stuff, that's kind of how it starts. But like, just imagine like how amazing a, like just in the Marvel Universe, like how amazing a cool TV show would be of like the super C-list superheroes. Who just live in a world with like, yeah. the Spider Man and stuff, and you're like, oh, well, I can, I got a fire in my hand. That's all I got. ABC had a wonderful idea in which it was going to be a television show that followed around a company that dealt with superhero cleanup. They yeah. were an insurance and cleanup company, and instead of making what is like the perfect concept for an awesome television show, they turned it into a crappy sitcom. And I was like, yeah. how could you wow. do that? This yeah. is so brilliant. They tried to. Do the safe thing. But I I think video games is another place where Star Wars used to play. Used to play all over the place from pod racing to freaking. Yeah. The the pod racer on Game Boy was awesome. I think it was Game. I think mine was on Game Cube. It had had a stupid little (laughs) AAA battery to play the stupid game. Force Unleashed, in which you're the apprentice of Darth Vader. He did it as soon as it's not a big deal. Oh, you got to kill Luke, so now Leia's a a Jedi Master, and you got to kill her next. Like, it's so much fun. Yeah. And none of it's canon. And guess what? Nobody Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nope. Yeah. Well, see, that's what kills me. Like, right now, I don't know how many of you or you at this table even pay attention right now to, like, Batman. Batman right now is a crazy spiked mech-looking thing with spikes covering his eyes and is, like, banging slash dating Harley Quinn and is fucking crazy. When I saw that, I thought it was a joke. There's a yeah. quite a few of, of interesting things going out there. But, like, to me, like, but that's cool. cool because guess what? That does not change how I feel about Batman. It doesn't change any of that. And it's like, whatever this art, I don't remember what the artist's name is, but it's like, cool. You guys are like, hey, you got a weird idea? Go with it. Now, why does it not apply to Star Wars? I agree. Scott Snyder is... Because the- those fans are crazy. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't, like, it doesn't have to be related. Like, I can imagine, like, imagine the Darth Vader comic we have now, but it's a horror comic, and it's just terrifying. Yeah. Mm. Like, you're maybe, like, a commander in the Empire, and you, like, 
your own Vader ship and you go place with him and you just watch a mask and you're like, that is daunting. And then at I the end see of it, him you're like, someone in that's half. my idea. And yeah. then the next one, he's like a, a na- nice guy trying to fight the good out of him. And he's like conflicted or whatever. That actually be really cool. Or you could be like a, a hometown, like positive kid. You're like, oh, the Empire is helping people. Yeah. And slowly you just start to realize how terrible it is. Yeah. It's like the a, Nazi <laughs> really cool. coming in. There, Scott Snyder is going to release a Batman comic in which all of Gotham has been decimated. It's like the Mad Max. Like, yeah. All that. And he's got the talking Joker head on his hip. Wow. He's trying to figure out how he got there. It's supposedly uh, going to be very. I don't know if you guys read the uh, Old Man Logan. He said yeah. he wanted it the same, like, tormented end of world, like, like just yeah. planes feel. But that's like. Wow. Li- yeah. Bad shit. Awesome. Crazy. Yeah. And amazing. Get it? He said bat. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm also. I mean, it, I talked about it how many times? I, Superman, Red Sun. Like, I love yeah. Yeah. these yeah. ways you can that's play in this world. But see, that one to me it. is like. I guess that's not. I, I don't know why that doesn't happen, like in, in a movie standpoint. Yeah. But like, at least we got that in a concept. Yeah. And so, like, that's my thing about Star Wars is like, this franchise is going to go away or at least like quickly fade out of public limelight. Because right now we have so much media and we have so much, like, there's so much content to consume. Yeah. And I felt like when I was a kid, like, there was the one, two, and three coming out, but like, that was kind of eh. But my uncle always was like, hey, read this book. Read this book. Yeah. Read this book. And it's like all the time, like, oh, my God, this is awesome. This is awesome. This is awesome. Now it's like I'm sitting here like, oh, well, the Battlefront 2 was okay. These movies are right. And this comic I don't care about. So it's like at what point do I just not care? And I think that that's going to happen more and more to more people unless they do something where it's like, hey, we're going to let these people be creative. Hey, we're yeah. going yeah. we're gonna to try hard on this, or we're going to let people do what they want. It's going to succeed or fail. Don't go with the Don't, don't be don't. afraid to fail, Disney. What about yeah. the exactly. rated R? Anything like, rated R. literally on. forcing yeah. someone in half. Like, someone messes yeah. with Vader, and he's like, yeah. you just see entrails fly everywhere. Like, no, what you do is, like... get seriously... Gra- I mean, they're at war. Yeah, yeah, like, just like what you guys said, the House of Cards, like, just show the Emperor's rise. Yeah, yeah, and it could be yep. brutal, and like, cause you are gonna have like a normal dude, like politician style, and then you're gonna go out and be like, Whoosh. yep, yeah. and, and that's gonna, gonna be like, whoa, someone to a point where they're like melting. Yeah, he just kills the competition. They have so many good ideas. I, I know agree. we're not even writers. <laughs> just imagine. <laughs> like, well, like, guess where you can find us. Look us up. Well, and you can even get like, cause arguably the most rated R Marvel has gone aside from Logan. Deadpool. It, Marvel didn't do that. Fox did that. You're right. I'm sorry. Fox owns or, Deadpool. Yeah. Or, so there you go. Yeah. So Fox owns them. Um, is the Netflix series that they have, which do a pretty good job. Uh, the worst one, if you're going to that rated R spectrum, is definitely Punisher. But you can yeah. get that level of brutality, that level of adultness, where you've got sex and drugs and alcohol and violence. And all of that can work in that world. Yeah. We've seen it work. It works really well in those television series. I'm always excited for the next one. If you did that with Star Wars, I'd be down. Like yeah. my issue is there's so many of these talented writers like, and it's even on Earth stuff. Like I remember Spartacus did not have great like visuals. I mean, I guess for the art style it was yeah. cool, but like yeah. you could tell like that wasn't a super big budgeted show. It was very that much was about sex. Awesome, but it was like it was like a weird take on the Roman times. Yeah. And it was like mm-hmm. that was something where like I like that era a whole lot. Like I may play this Assassin's Creed just because of the era, but like that show was like this isn't what I would have wrote, but this is cool. Yeah, I guess this First is awesome. Time I saw that. I, dad turned it on, and then all of a sudden, and mom sat down. And was what are you watching? And all of a sudden, hardcore porn. sex scene. It was porn. porn. We're porn. porn. Mom's <laughs> like, "What are we doing right now?" <laughs> I'm like, "This dad. is just as awkward for me." <laughs> dad puts his hand on your shoulder. I'm teaching my son a thing. <laughs> no, he's not. And this is just getting really awkward. Uh, that was funny. What, what was your your second? You double one? You down. You wanted to double down. You double dip and scoop down the answer. Actually, when we talked about yeah. it earlier, I think resistance <laughs> actually has a decent idea and i think it could be made so into a amazing. much dark i i think it would be preferred to be much darker based on the storyline it's very apocalyptic they're winning things are already decimated i don't think they went dark enough in yeah. the third one i enjoyed the concept of what they were going through and i wish they would have done it right and i if they would have done i think better writing it would have been great but also the multiplayer is like a big fat dog on two not three right my right. shoe with Resistance. No, we don't need to see the Chimera. No, I was going to say, you can't press redo hard enough on that game. Yeah. I just, I just feel like it has, like, it the was... The idea is great. It was like, whoop, 
and then instead of like slowly decaying, it just like it went did. a little bit and then spiked and then went through the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I think you could get away with it if you went. You would have to redesign it in a way where it wouldn't be a first person shooter. I don't think the first game is a first person shooter. You can make it more of a Last of Us event. Exactly. Yeah. I wouldn't even do it like a Last of Us. I would do it like a. Um, like a non combat esque, like you are a person in the first place he gets invaded, and like you are trying to get to like a Ooh. like a Fallout shelter Silent type place. Yeah. yeah, like a almost Very like horror, not really horror, feel, like fully, but like it gets you don't know what's way. getting all going on. You know, bad stuff's going down. You d- are not trained to fight. You're not like a yeah first person shooter. You maybe feel like a young Ellie. Like yeah, I am not good with this. I I would rather run than fight. Yeah, yeah. I think it'd be fun. I think yep. there there's definitely room to grow there. That whole concept's amazing. That'd be really cool. As you get further out and as their invasions are getting more intense, you're having it's getting harder and harder and you're having, having to make to, tough choices. Yeah. And, like yeah. sacrifices yep. even. Yeah. Like, oh wow, we got this kid and he's super scared and he's making noise. Yeah, I mean oh so my God, even kid they cut my hand off. I gotta cut it off and put an alien hand on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then here's a new person we never showed you before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, By the way, he's important. Yeah. Another cool idea is with that as well would be if parts of the world, say, aren't talking about this. So you're like, you're just a guy who's like, hey, I'm 18. I'm going to go join the military. And it's like, oh, we're in times of peace. You're just going to go to the Middle East and fight for oil. Then you get there and like, by the way, there's aliens. Good luck. That would actually (laughs) be really cool. What the? Set in modern day, you go over to Iraq, and the whole thing is we're thinking we're fighting terrorists, and in reality, it's the Chimera uprising again. The government's yeah. t- not talking about it because they don't want to scare the world. Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. Dude. I love that idea. Brain orgasm. Yeah. He just had one. Yeah. So. <laughs> we, I, I feel like we could literally talk about this topic all day. So yep. we're going to have to end it now. It's sad. Thank you once again for joining us. You uh, have any, uh, anything going on in your brain? Be sure to leave it down in the comments. Yeah, please tell us what franchises you would like to fix and how you would fix them. It uh, doesn't really matter what it is. We obviously branched out quite a bit here. Uh, feel free to reach out to us at any of our social medias, which are located in the comments. comments. Uh, no, not in the comments. Uh, in the description. description. On the description. 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 Yeah, you know what I mean. We'll be in the comments. Yeah, we will. And be I'll be there to tell you that you're wrong if you think that things shouldn't be rare in gaming. Because things should be rare in gaming. It's getting a little violent. Where I know. He's getting I, so hostile I'm about so this. I'm so sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean any of this. We can't do this Aim anymore. Aim for the bushes. Aim for the bushes. Yeah. <laughs>